All right, so bear with me. This version of the video acquisition is a little different than what I'm used to. Also, it's not really the same mic, so it might sound a little echoey as I try to get things together. Uh, really just trying to find my footing with it. We'll see how this works. Anyhow, today we'll be talking about the bane of every hunter's existence, chronic wasting disease, and how chronic wasting disease actually relates to a prion disease that affects humans. So get ready for this because it is absolutely horrifying. Before actually getting into what this disease quite literally does and how it could pose an eradication issue, we must first begin to understand what prion disease is. There are three main versions of prion disease, and albeit they are rare, their ability to take down a person is almost unrivaled by most other diseases. The first version is known simply as CJD or Creutzfeldt Jacob disease. A person can inherit this disease due to their own genes, and in this case it is known as familiar CJD. That's not to say that you cannot just develop it sporadically sporadically working with what's already there. Should it develop suddenly and without warning, this is known as sporadic CJD. Regardless of how it pops up, CJD will usually take a person out within a year when they acquire this disease. The next version is known as variant CJD. This insidious disease is known as the infectious type. This is a version that was related to the mad cow disease. Medically, mad cow disease is known as bovine spongiform encephalopathy. This version of CJD can be acquired by eating tainted meat. The proteins from the cow will go on to affect the human and then lead to the same disease. Unlike regular CJD, this version will likely affect young people due to meat consumption. The more known way of acquiring this disease is also through cannibalism. Individuals whose religious beliefs and practices are centered around consuming the brains of the dead. Because of this, they would begin developing a lot of the same issues that the person they were consuming was really probably led to their end, and this is known as Kuru. It has become more rare lately due to education programs in place to sort of like stamp out the issue, but in more isolated tribes or more isolated areas of the world, this disease can still be quite prevalent. So what is prion disease? Prion disease is nothing more than a misfolding of a protein. That's quite literally it. Just one tiny protein, and this in the body gets folded, which kind of leads to a cascading effect of all other proteins becoming folded wrong, and this is essentially what infects your meat suit. You might be asking, well, why doesn't the body just fix this? That's actually a pretty good question. Why doesn't it? Well, the issue is, is when a protein misfolds, the body can no longer control it. The proteas we have that unfold proteins are very specific to what's in our bodies. Should the shape change or the bonds really become stronger than what the proteas can overcome, then that protein quite literally will just continue to exist within the body. And what makes it dangerous is when the protein has an infectious quality to it. The issue is, is that with misshapen protein, there is no DNA. It doesn't infect cells and inject RNA like a virus does. The immune system can't really absorb it or destroy it. It is the most basic building block and it's just too small for cells to actually get a hold of it and destroy it properly. It simply is just a physical element to our body based upon bonds and the shape it has. It becomes dangerous when the shape has actually been seen or is seen at least by other protein as a better shape and a better fold than how the protein is actually supposed to be folded. Prion disease is so dangerous, or prion disease, really there's, there's a bunch of ways you can pronounce it, but prion, prion, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's so dangerous because not only is it misshapen, but it can't be broken down. But should it come into contact with another protein in the body, it can actually change the shape of that protein. Then that protein will go out and infect another protein, and then those proteins will go out and infect more proteins, and as you can see, it can quickly become kind of an issue for your body because it is the most basic building block, right? And this actually, as it continues on and time passes, will increase in rate. So it's sort of like a slow burn at first, and then it just <sighs> spreads out of control. So you might be asking, well, we have cells. Who really cares about just proteins? Well, as I mentioned earlier, proteins are the most basic building blocks of cells. So it's sort of like if you take a broken block and you try to build a house out of it, your house is going to fall down. Same concept with the cell. On top of this, Proteins will begin to amass in the body, but more specifically where it becomes an issue and dangerous is when they begin to cluster in the brain. When the disease begins to overwhelm the brain case, this can lead to rapidly developing dementia, difficulty walking, hallucinations, muscle stiffness, confusion, fatigue, difficulty speaking. All these ailments get worse as it progresses until ultimately it results in your end. Interestingly though, the disease was originally known locally to most people as a laughing disease. Those who consumed the brains of others who were exhibiting this trait would also 
also in turn develop uncontrollable laughter as their brain degraded. So overall, it's a pretty creepy disease. So how does this relate to chronic wasting disease? Well, luckily for us currently, unlike bovine spongification encephalopathy, this particular prion does not appear to leap to a human when it's consumed. It could be that our proteins, along with cow's proteins, are similar enough to cause protein misfolding, but with deer, they are too dissimilar. At any rate, deer afflicted with this disease will begin to shake, become emaciated, and exhibit traits unlike normal prey animals. They will typically stick to one area, mainly due to their difficulty in walking, but this malevolent disease also has the added fact that as it progresses very slowly, this can lead to another whole host of issues and problems that are not good for anybody. Specifically concerning incubation period. Well, actually, you know, since it's not really a normal disease, it's not much of an incubation period, but it's actually just the amount of time it takes until the deer starts showing symptoms, which is actually, believe it or not, a nice chunk of time for them at least. During this, they are still completely infectious to other deer, which as you can imagine, is a little bit of a problem concerning the fact that deer are actually highly social creatures. Deer will stick around one another in herds and if this is reindeer specifically we're talking about, which chronic wasting disease does exist within these species, or at minimum subspecies, these are massive herds. During this time, any excrement that they produce or saliva is actually contagious to other deer. The disease can be passed through the herd extremely quickly, and these proteins are very hardy and can even exist on communal salt licks. As prion disease spreads to others, it makes them slower and less likely to run at the site of danger as well. Say like if a uh, random bear wanders into the herd, those that are not infected will probably take off running. Those that are infected, they'll just kind of stand there and shake. So it's not completely known yet, but the possibility of prion disease to spread to a predator is entirely plausible, which in turn will lead to another population becoming infected. But more alarmingly, the disease is so hardy that it can actually exist outside of the body. Should a deer fall where it is and be broken down by microorganisms, the prions can actually continue to exist in this soil. Prions can also exist, as stated previously, in their excrement as well. With the prions in the soil, they can be taken up by plants and grasses, and as we all know, deer consume these grasses. Which, as to probably be expected, this could restart the whole cycle, infecting a new herd of deer, then they go out and infect more. It's, it's kind of a, it can create a runaway effect if it gets away from us. That to me is one of the worst parts about this disease because there is no cooking, no medicine, nothing that will actually stop this disease from spreading into you, except for if the proteins don't match up. We don't actually know if they do or don't right now. When you contract prion disease or develop it, basically you are a year in hospice after that and then it's pretty much lights out, unfortunately. But well before that, it's lights out for you anyways, man. I mean, it's kind of like you lose your mind in the process and are you really Really even alive at that point. But just to bring like a little bit of reality to this, while prion disease has no cure and is always fatal, it is extremely rare and nothing lasts forever. I mean, look at the laws of thermodynamics, right? Supposedly even protons will decay. Hopefully not though. Even though it was able to survive for a while out in the open, that doesn't mean it won't eventually be broken down by natural processes. Again, there is really no evidence to suggest that it spreads to human as of now, and mice are being tested with chronic wasting disease to see how exactly it can spread to them. Because if it can jump the species barrier, that means it can jump our species barrier, which, uh, no, not really a good time. Anyhow, thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed. This is my first time y'all are actually seeing me do my outro. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments. It probably needs some work, I'm sure. Uh, I've never worked with a green screen before, and I've never really been in front of camera except for the face reveal thing, or I guess, uh, live streams. So, anyways, I don't want to make this too long. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, I would really appreciate some feedback on this. If you guys enjoyed the structure, also let me know if you just sound like incoherent rambling. Let me know that as well. All right, catch y'all in the next one.